Her interior design work went beyond just ordinary decoration. She always was interested in colour and in space, almost like an artwork. She was one of the earliest interior designers in Australia. In her lifetime, she became quite successful and really sought after by a lot of people. She was incredibly generous with her ideas and her praise, wasn't she? And my, my main memory of her, I'd have to say, was that she was like Speedy Gonzales. <laughs> Anyone so fast. She moved fast, she, moved she had this incredible vibrancy about yeah. her. Isn't it wonderful that a designer went against the grain of beiges and, and boringness um, to actually celebrate colour and its incredible diversity and the 3D? I think it's the shapes and the, um, also going back into the world of what a new interior design world was because people didn't use interior designers before marrying Holbeck. In the uh, early 20th century, the idea of an independent interior designer became more common, I suppose. Before that, if you were interested in having your house decorated, you might get advice from a retail or a department store. So Marion became interested in this, this idea from an early age. She was always interested in art. Ideas on art theory and colour abounded in the 1920s and I think Marion soaked a lot of that up and then started to practise on her own home, on some of her friends' homes and then by about 1937, that sort of period, she starts getting larger commissions. In Australia, in the design world, everything had been either yellow or green and rather heavy. And Marion, I think, who was always about innovation, felt that Australia was a country that was not green and dark and blue and solid like Europe. So that's why she went for these brilliant sort of oranges and, and reds and pinks. You would often get remarks by people who'd say, you know, oh my God, look, look at the colours they've put together. People used to condemn some of the <laughs> stuff we did. I remember some, Marion got really upset one day because sometimes it said it looked like she'd thrown spinach on the walls. <laughs> the modern was what really inspired her, what she was interested in. And she thought that good modern furniture, some of those, you know, new designs using revolutionary materials from the 50s and 60s, good furniture, was, was like good sculpture. She went um, looking for uh, furniture and furnishings all around the world. Furniture supplies from the United States like Knoll and Herman Miller, Finnish design like Marimekko and Italian furniture and lighting, Thai silks from Jim Thompson. It was always, you know, part of the travel to look and see what was happening overseas and what was interesting and what could be used in Australia. And it was always exciting to go and unpack one of the boxes to see what was coming out. Like all interior design, you know, there's obviously uh, talking to the client about what they were thinking of. She would consider and come up with a scheme or the bones of a scheme. And often it would be, a, you know, brainstorming. Somebody would say, oh, this would be good. And things would get thrown in. And with a lot of people working on it, you came up quite quickly with wonderful things. She worked with other quite wealthy uh, families like the, the Fairfaxes, and she worked with Zara Holt, the Prime Minister's wife. Some of her more, more famous schemes are the commercial schemes like the Regent Theatre at Wollongong, and she did public display uh, spaces as well that the public can wander through and, and, and have a look at. She was completely out of her era, in, in, in fact. She, she herself walked into the whole modern age as well as creating it in design. She embraced everything that was new if she thought it was valuable. She knew what she liked and she sort of went and got it. 
and all of that furniture, all those furnishings from around the world added up to the Marion Hall best look. Mm -hmm.